Hi everyone, and thank and uh, thanks for joining me on this uh, third and final uh, webinar for variables and logic blocks. Um, today is going to be about gamification, and uh, what I mean by that is over the last couple of weeks we've looked at variables and logic blocks and and having certain conditions, and now what we're going to do is use those uh, to make a game, as it were. Right, so I'm Martin. We will be joined uh, later on by Karen when we get to the Q and A. Uh, speaking of Q and As. Um, Let's just show the little screen print. Um, basically, if you want to ask questions throughout the webinar, please click on the Q&A tab, type in your questions. Um, please keep uh, your questions on topic and um, at, at, at the end of the webinar where I hand over to Karen at that, at that point, that's when we're going to be stopped taking questions because of a slight time delay. Okay, so that's that. Um, one of the other things is I need to say is um, I'm on a Mac. Um, I've got some uh, a, a, a little application that shows my keyboard that when I click buttons, you'll see. So that's the command. If you see me click command, if you're on a PC, that will be um, the control key. So if I do something like to select everything, command A, that would be control A on the PC. And this button on the Mac is the alt key um, on the older Mac keyboards and on your PC. So that's that. Um, yeah, I think that's about everything I need to say. So yeah, just keep on topic with the questions because I say this is uh, being all recorded. So we want to keep the recordings all together. Right, okay. Um, so let's start. I'm going to open up the project and what I want to do initially is just walk you through the game um, that we've built. So let's just open it up and here it is. Um, now this is a shop, it's got three nodes, uh, which was ideal. Um, now as you can see, there's no hotspots or anything, um, but we've got a clue written in text. Um, you could, if you wanted, I don't know, if you wanted to take this one step further, create an MPEG-3, put a button on here, click and get the thing to talk to you. But the clue here is, you know, what are the colors you can see? Enter, in, uh, enter the correct order. From this room, you may flee. So there's like a little poem going on there. Um, in one place, you will find the bag, the hair, and my best friend. All right. So basically, here is my target. So this is a bag. You've got the hair and the bite, and you know man's best friend, as it were, or being politically correct, person's best friend, I suppose, is my dog. Okay. So they are um, the colours are red, yellow, and white, um, and it's saying in the correct order. So as an example. Um, here's this little thing that's fly, flying about and this is what you've got to click all right so um, if I click as an example the white and then um, I know the yellow then the red I'm not going to go anywhere it's not showing any um, any further or a, 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 anything to say that I can progress uh, progress so I can click the reset and of course following the clue it says bag hair and my best friend so the bag color is red so let's wait for it to get to red click that the hair is yellow click that and then the dog is white as soon as I solve the clue we move on to no two now it does say here look behind you so as I now spin round you can now see the hot spot wiggling away to make it you know uh, apparent that there's something there to click so we click on no two we're in now in no two the clue changes Bees live here. Well, bees live in beehives. So if you spin round, you'll see three beehives. And um, yeah, it says the clue says, you know, to to move on, you've got to click and, and make your way down. So you start at the top. Now you could hide this box. Uh, this little text box here is going to show uh, a numbered variable. And the idea is, is when you get to the correct number, it will do as it did before and show a point hotspot. So we click the the beehives in in order so from the top work down so click that one we get 80 this button here is going to divide it by two to get to 40 and this one <laughs> if anybody knows me will add two so we're now at 42 all right um so yeah it says you found the the ultimate question so rotate by 180 and as you rotate by 180 we've now got our hotspot all right so i'll click the hotspot takes us to the last room Clue three, it says click the known before the time is up to conquer this game and win the cup. Um, basically, it also says if you delay, you will see back to node two you will be. Uh, 
and it, it, you get 10 seconds. When we click the start button, it starts a 10 second timer. You've got 10 seconds to try and find the item. If you don't, it will auto change back. Um, so let's just wait, there we go. So you're now thrown back to room two. And if you click again, you're back in the room this time round. And you probably noticed last time, there's no text boxes, there's no need for that. And then when we get to our target, which is our little gnome, here it is. Oh, missed it again. So I'll go to our little, our little gnome who's down here and you guys don't hear that, but there's actually an MPEG-3 that goes, ta-da, and yeah, so anyway, so that's basically the game. So how did we build it? What's, how does this work? Right, well, one of the first things you would have noticed, so let's get into the skin. Um, now, of course, I'm gonna make this completely available. You guys can download and see all this, so there's, there's no need to worry too much about it, but um, the first thing we need to look at is the timer we've got an any ht timer so this is responsible for animating the point hotspot the 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 wiggle from side to side okay it also does other things as well because whilst i've got this timer running i thought okay i can do other things with this and what this timer is doing is if i click in the um uh, into the uh, skin editors uh canvas you'll see that we've got a variable called any ht and it's a numbered variable Okay, so if we look at the timer, what that's doing is every time the timer is active, it's adding plus one to that variable. And when we get to, uh, 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 and, and we've also got this uh, modulo, which is a circular calculation. So when we get to six, it throws us back to zero. We covered all this in the last webinar, so this shouldn't be new. But basically what I've now got is a variable called Annie dot, uh, underscore HT, which is going from zero to five back to zero. So that's going round all the time, and that's changing every half second. Um, again, if you remember from last week, we said about, you know, because uh, you have an active state for quarter of a second, a deactive state for quarter of a second, and an active state for quarter of a second. So in between active states, it's half, okay? So with that said, uh, moving on to the hotspot and all the magic there. Now, the hotspot itself had some colors changing, okay? So if we have a look under the uh, record, basically the background is just a rectangle. And if we look, the rectangle has got a logic block. If I select the logic block, you'll see that there's just a bunch of numbers there. So when it's at zero, it's gonna be showing red. When it's at one, it's green, at two, blue. And then I go round again, all right? Now, you know, you could turn around and say, well, why didn't you shorten the, um, timer to only have like three positions so only do red uh, green blue um perfectly good reason for that which i'll explain and will and i will come back to but basically that's the that's how the the background or, or, or the outer or the border of the rectangle is changing colors it's using the same any ht timer now the actual uh, images um are using an external loader okay and the timer is actually affecting the angle. So if we look at the angle, you can see that when the HT any, or the, sorry, the, the, the any HT is at zero, or two, or four, so these are the evens, it's gonna be heading over to the minus 45 degrees. And when it's at the uh, odds, it heads over to 45. So as the timer's running, it's wiggling from side to side, and it's wiggling quite quickly. All right, so this is why I wanted it to wiggle. And now you can say again, well, why did you have so many numbers? Right, well, I wanted to have a fast wiggle. I wanted to have um, a speedy color change, but the first clue, if you, if, you, if you remember, is basically a set of three colors that are sliding from side to side. So if we have a look at this and open it up, you can see how this is built. Now, this is the text box. This is the clue text. Okay, so I'll just keep that hidden for the minute. And what we've got here is a little container and the container is set for masking. You can see that here, all right? So basically we can only see things that are inside this container, all right? So if I open it up, you'll see that I've got another container that's quite long and it's holding three little rectangles. Okay, 
and this little rectangle or, or, or the, the 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 Q1 slider, this rectangle, uh, this um, container here, is changing its position with the timer. So when the timer's at zero and one, it stays in its current position. When it's at two or three, it's moving to minus 34. Now look at the operation. This is important because um, by default, when you put an, a, a condition in, you'll have an and. Um, of course, a timer cannot have, or the timer's variable cannot be zero and one at the same time. So that's why it's an or, okay? So what we're saying is, is that when the timer is at zero or one, stay at uh, position zero or X zero. When the timer is at two or three, move it to minus 34 pixels. And if it's at four or five, move that at minus 66. So what I've got is a timer that's running quite quickly that's making things happen quickly as I want. So let's go back to the output and see this. Um, let's, oh, come on. So let's close this. Um, let's go back to the output. So you can see now that because this is using two counts, it's happening quite slow, all right? So let's just activate this. Okay, and the same timer is really wiggling and doing the RGB of the point hotspot. Okay, so that's why I, I created the timer to have such like to have like five steps from zero to five, um, so I could achieve different speeds just by using the different um, logic blocks or the different settings in the logic block. Okay, so this um, this project has um, two different node images for the hotspots. These have been added to the project using assets. Okay, so again, HTML5 output, go to the um, advanced tab and add your assets. Okay, if we go back to the skin, I know we're doing a little bit of jumping here, but it will calm down in, in a second, I can assure you, right? So what we've got here is the external URL. Okay, so this is what reads in what image we will, we, we will be showing. Okay, so I've got two expressions here uh, in the logic block to show images. When I'm in node one, which is the first node, all right, and I've actually got the variable um, for the question, red, yellow, and white. When that condition is met, we are going to show, show node image two, which is the little dinosaur, which is what we see in the external loader here okay all right so that's that's that um when we leave this node of course it won't be node one anymore so this will hide and when we get to node two and we solve the problem and then that variable reaches 42 then we show this image okay so that's the images swapping depending on the condition of the variables. Now I've tried to make the variables um, easy to understand. So if I go through this, we've got an EHT, so that's the number counting up. And I've got the variable for Q1, which is the text. So this is where we get our red, yellow, white. And then we've got the variable for number two, which is when this equals 42, then we can do something here. And here we have another numbered variable, um, which I'll cover in a second. And then we've got the um, variable Q3, which is um, a text variable, um, which again will help turn on and off um, other elements. Now, again, sounds confusing. What do I mean by that? What I want to do is if we go back to um, node 2, all right, um, and complete this task into node 3. Okay, now the thing to remember, right, is that we've got a timer that's going to activate in node three. So when I go into node three, there is no timer starting. All right, I've got my uh, my little clue, and when I click the start button, that starts my 10 second timer. Okay, now I'm going to leave that to time out because when it times out, I'm going to go back to node two as it's done. But now when I click the hotspot, 
you'll see that there is no text. Don't need to. So that hotspot is now activating the timer. So how is this working? How does it, I can use a text box to start it in one instance and then I'm using a hotspot to start it in another. Well, again, there's quite simple. If we go back and have a look, all right, so let's go back to Q3, there's a, a screen tint. We've got the start button. So let's bring all these in and here's our clue text. So here's the start button. So when we get to node three, okay, and I click that button, we set 10 seconds to the initial timer or to the node three timer and I set the variable to Q3 to true. Right, okay. Now just remember that. Oh, sorry, I closed the skin. If we now go back to the hotspot, this has the actions to open different nodes as you would have a normal hotspot, mouse click, open next panorama. But it has this action to set the value to that timer again from the hotspot. The thing that's stopping this from setting the timer every time you click that is an action filter. And the action filter says when the Q3 variable equals true. And this only happens when you click that start button. So from nodes one to two and two to three, it will not set the timer off because this will be sitting at false. It's only when you click the start button, we're changing the variable value to true. So if you don't complete the task in those 10 seconds and you're thrown out back to node two, then when you click the hotspot again, because this is now set to true, it restarts your timer for you. So you don't have to have a different you know, uh, text box to click. Okay, right. So. That's basically everything I wanted to talk about for the hotspot and the first uh, first clue. So that's in the first question. Um, he says, was it? No, okay. If we click, um, uh, basically what I wanted to do was just say, because we obviously spoke about it, that we're using the HT timer to move this slider side, side by side by the count, all right? Um, so we've now got this going side by side. And what we've got now is uh, these three rectangles and now what I did was color match these with the um, uh, items in the in the panorama that was really easy to do so let's get back to um, the outright and the way I did this was basically if we select one of the um, one of them here for the dog so with Snowy's white what I did was basically click the color picker you can click and if you click and hold, you can go off and sample any color. So I basically sampled all the um, items I wanted to, like the dog, the hair, the bag. So I actually got these rectangles perfectly matching, obviously to help people uh, understand. But these all have a mouse click value. So let's go back up so we can see it. And the mouse click on all of the little rectangles is to set the variable and give it a plus all right plus yellow now this brings me on to um talking about um number and text variables you can use the plus to add to both of these but what's going to happen let's just show you this um let's start a new skin um so if i add uh, var1 var2 that's a number Let's change that to text. I'm going to add a text box here and add a text box here. I know I'm doing this really quickly, but this is just to show you these are, and I'm going to be using my little, you, know, you probably know me by now, I, I like to use helpers. So what I'm going to do is set a variable to show, or set this text box to show the contents of var1, or variable one. And this one is going to show, oops, too fast. This is going to show the contents of variable two. All right, so what I'm going to do now is add two more buttons. All right, this one, I'm going to say mouse click, set variable value, variable one, 
plus one okay this one is going to be well, almost identical so let's actually I can copy that so right button click copy select that right button click paste all right but this time around it will be variable two and I'll oh, actually that do that one okay so both of these are identical mouse click cerebral uh, set variable value um, except for one's variable number one one's variable number two but they're both adding one all right but the idea is to show you the difference is when you're adding to a numbered variable and a text variable what are you likely to see so straight away you can see this is the numbered variable because it starts at zero and when I click this button and I plus one I'm adding one to it if I click it again two and when I keep clicking so it counts up with a text variable if I click this it adds one when I click it again it adds another one and when I click it again it adds another one so this is adding information in a string and this one's adding information as in a count all right so this is where now I'm just gonna um, should I save this yes I just save this as a, a little um, uh, so let's just put um, skin one just for you guys if you want to see it afterwards but the idea is is that when we go back to and let me go to there um, when we go back to the project and have a look at our question one uh, slider and let's do the bag was the first one so basically what we're doing here I'm using the plus one so I'm I'm entering the word red now this is also has I don't know if you could see that probably not um, let's see if I can zoom no that's not going to zoom in for me okay um, but oh here we go you might see that there is actually a space behind it so it's actually red space okay and then for the hair um, this is going to be entering yellow space and then the final one dog is just the word dog with no space so the idea is is that when you enter this data in the actual readout you do see a space in between them but the space is also part of it so if you get it wrong if you do like I don't know dog bag hair um, then you might see two words very close together with no spaces that's a bit of a clue that something's going wrong um, and you know makes you try and sort that out in your head you don't have to do that I mean you don't even have to show the output I mean basically what the game is looking for is just that the those buttons are clicked in the correct sequence and then the variable itself is looking for um, the uh, red yellow white okay so we've now clicked all of these in sequence we've now got red yellow white the text box that had our clue here it is it's got a variable attached to it sorry a um, logic block attached to it and the logic block says when the variable reads as it should uh, let's just move that to one side red yellow white when it reads that then we can change the text so this is where it now says look behind you uh, click the hotspot and move to node 2 so yeah so that's basically um, once you've completed the sequence you've added that sequence to the variable once you've got that variable you can trigger text box and of course when we go back to the point hotspot all right what we do is first and foremost when we e enter red yellow white under visible and we're in node 1 we see it so the hotspot becomes visible under the text uh, or under the external URL when it's node 1 and we've got red yellow white we then show the correct hotspot image for it so what we're doing here is dynamically showing hotspots when puzzles are solved and we can dynamically change what the hotspot image is going to be and all we're doing is adding those to assets as, well, as I showed at the start and we're just reading them in here so it's not low as though you've got to have lots and lots and lots of images in the skin the skin is dynamically reading these in as and when you solve the puzzles okay all right 
So that's the hotspot, that's the puzzle one. Now what I want to do now is look at how puzzle two was put together. Okay, so let's, um, let's go to, let's, I can close up the hotspots uh, or the hotspot and go to um, question two, here it is. Okay, so question two. Um, how does this work? Well, I'll tell you what, let's just go to the, the project. Um, if, if we go to the node, basically what I've got is three polygons drawn, all right, around the beehives. So one, two, three. Now this is quite clever, quite proud of this, he says. Um, let's just collapse some of this to make the tree a little bit easier to view. Um, the polygons, um, what you can do um, is, if you, uh, uh, I'm, I'm using polygons and hotspot proxy IDs where I'm linking, basically what it means is I'm linking a polygon to a skin element and that skin element will then have actions in that can be actioned when you click the polygon. Now, to actually make this easier to see and understand and to keep your uh, file tree you know, in order, what I've done is said, right, I've got this container, it says Q2 polygons. All right, so I've now grouped them together. And basically how I'm doing this is in the good old days, what you would have done is if I've got three separate polygon hotspots, I would have three separate polygon IDs. So it may be poly 01, poly 02, poly 03. I would then open up um, a, uh, let's just grab any old thing. Here we go. And under the hotspot proxy ID, I would type in here, poly 01, poly 02, poly 03. And then the actions I'd want it would be here. So the idea is that when I clicked poly 01, it would execute the action here. This is what the hotspot proxy ID does. All right, so let's just get rid of that. Now, what that does is you have one polygon anchor or, or, or attached to that by using the proxy ID and any action in there, you can have multiple actions in there. So clicking the one polygon will activate all of those actions starting from top to bottom and execute them all, all right? In this case, I don't want to do that. In this case, I want three different polygons doing a similar job, but I need them separated out, but I'm still using a single container. So how on earth am I doing that? Right, well this is utilizing, if I close this, let's go back to node two, all right, and look at the polygons. When I click on a polygon hotspot, you'll, you'll see that I've put in the description. Now, I've only put it in the description text field because it's easy to see. Personally, I'd end up putting them in the target, but let's not worry about that right now. So the idea is, is that I've got a polygon hotspot and it's unique to the fact that it's saying Q2 underscore one. So this is for question two, you know, find item one. If I click this one, it says it's question two, find item two. And the last one would be obviously question two, item three. Okay, so I've now got descriptions, separate descriptions in there. Now with the hotspot proxy ID, as I said before, if I wanted this to work with poly 01, I would physically type in poly 01, but I'm using an asterisk and an asterisk is a wild card. In other words, this will work with any point or polygon hotspot. All right, as soon as I click anything, any actions in here will be executed or triggered. Okay, so how do I prevent the wrong action from being triggered? Let's have a look. I'm using an action filter. All right. And what I'm saying is in the action filter, when the hotspot description, right, so let's have a look. I can go down to placeholders, hotspots and description. So when the hotspot description equals Q1, I can trigger this event. And because only this action has that, only this action will be triggered. So now you can literally, if you've got um, uh, polygons and you're triggering lots of things using hotspot proxy IDs to tidy up your skin, you can create one container, call it polygon triggers or whatever you want to call it. I'm just calling it Q2 polygons because it's these are in charge of 
my question to in node two. And I can put all my actions in here, keeping it nice and tidy. All right, so that's tidying up the tree. Okay, now I do have another polygon here um, for question three, but I'll get to that when we're covering question three. Okay, so let's go back to the skin. If I click in the skin, you'll see that I've got a variable for, um, question, uh, for, for, for question two, and it's a numbered variable. So he says, how are we doing this? How do we get to a number that's unique that when I'm clicking around, I can, you know, that it has to be in a certain order. I've got to start from the top and work down. How am I achieving this? Well, basically what I've said is the very first beehive, when you click it, I'm adding the number 80 to the numbered variable. All right, so we've got plus 80. Now I could have put an equals 80 in there, but that would break this and I'll show and I'll, I'll explain why in a second. But when I click this, I'm adding 80 to that number. When I click the next beehive, I'm, um, he says, uh, this one down here, number two. When I click the next one, it's dividing it by two. So I've gone from 80, I'm now down to 40. And then the last one, so let's just rearrange these just to make it fair. Right, so the last one then is when I click it, it's plusing two. So that's where I'm getting my 42 from. So let's go back to the um, to the game. I should have put some shortcuts in here. I'm sure I really should have done. Right, so there's my uh, trigger. Let's whiz that round. I'm back in the game. Right. So back in the game, as he says. Right, so click the first one. As I said, we're at 80. Click the second one, it's divided by two, it's 40. Click this one, we're now at 42. If I just reset this, basically the reset buttons, all they're doing is clearing out the variable. All right, so in this case, I'm setting it back to zero. So what happens if I, you know, obviously if I do it the wrong way around, that's only going to two, that's gonna divide it by, um, uh, divide it by two, so back to one, and then that's gonna give me 81. So I'm not really gonna get to 42 in any other combination other than the correct combination. All right, and as soon as I get to 42, like we did before, the text box um, for uh, question two. All right, so here's the clue text. Let's show that. Um, so here's the clue text. When I get to 42, when it says 42, we can just change the text. So, and then that instructs you to spin round to find the point hotspot. Now the point hotspot, like um, with question one, it, it had its, um, let's go back to it actually. Um, let's go here. Right, so it becomes visible when we're in node two. Here we go, so node two equals node two. And um, when the variable equals 42, that's when it shows. And at 42, we're gonna load the correct image. So again, you know, as I said before, we're dynamically changing images. So you can have one point hotspot and you can have as many images swapping in and out as you want. Okay, so that's that's how that's working and getting me into node three. Right now, we did mention a little bit about node three um, and um, and how that's working. But what we didn't cover was the um, so let's hide some of this stuff in the tree because it's getting a little bit chaotic. Um, I can hide the banner page banner. All right, okay, and we can collapse that. So we're now at node three. Um, and as we walked into node three, let's just show everything and let's get rid of node two question. There we go. So we've got a background um, screen, Tim. There we go. So we've got the title or, or, the, or the actual text box is here with our text in and we've got the Q3 start button. All right. Now the Q3 start button, as I said, it starts, it starts the timer running and I've got a separate timer for node three couldn't quite get everything I wanted in the one timer as much as I tried, um, but it makes sense to have it as a separate timer. And the idea is, is that when we start this timer off, we get 10 seconds, all right? And when we get 10 seconds, um, when it finishes, it, it, it's gonna set the variable to true, all right? Okay, so this is gonna be v, uh, the uh, variable Q3, we're gonna set to true. Now, if we look at the container 
for Q3. So for question three, we've got a, a polygon container. Well, why have we got a polygon container? Because inside node three, we click on our little um, gnome, uh, Christmas gnome there, and there is a polygon. Now this is just one polygon, one action. I don't need to do anything. So I've just changed the ID as we would, right? So I've just changed the ID from poly01, poly02 to just say end, okay? And the idea is, is that when we click this, all right, I play media, which is the Tadar, which you lot can't hear, um, but it does, believe me, because I get it in my headphones and it blasts my ears out. Um, it also sets um, the uh, timer's value to zero, so it stops the timer, all right? Because don't forget, when the timer times out, it throws me back to node two, all right? Okay, so, and again, on mouse click, it's setting the variable visEnd to true. Now, why do I have a visEnd? Why, 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 why? Okay. Okay, right. When I'm in node three, there is my sound. Okay. Now, I set to keep. Let's not put that to keep. All right, so there's my sound. All right, now, surround sounds and static sounds um, basically only play in the node that they're in. If you want it available to all nodes, you would click keep, okay? But this is the thing you've got to remember. This is in node three, and it can only be kept once it's been activated. So this sound is not available in node one. It's not available in node two. It's available in node three. All right, so I'm just, as I say, I'm just gonna, select that so it's enable it's available in node 3 but if the timeout happens and the timer throws me back to node 2 this sound is no longer available for the tada once I have finished the 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 puzzle okay so let's just see um, hang on let's just see this so here is my node 3 timer okay and why is this important? This timer is set to manual. In other words, a manual timer has no active or deactivated state. It's just sitting there, okay? And what this timer's got is a button that on click, when we click the start button, we're adding 10 seconds to this timer. So we start it on active for run for 10 seconds, okay? At the end of 10 seconds, when it's up and we deactivate, this is what throws us back. This action here is throwing me back to node two at a specific pan tilt field of view. So I'm looking at the door. So I can just click the hotspot again to come back. All right. Okay. Now this is the thing you got to think of. If you complete the puzzle and stop the timer and you send it to zero, you're deactivating the timer it will throw you back to node 2 even though you've completed it and you get the 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 the, the this cup appear with congratulations the actual pano at this point will go back to node 2 so the sound tada will no longer be available okay all right so how i got around that was one of two ways you can either set the sound to keep because obviously once we've been in node three and then gone back to node two because i've already been to node three and we set it to keep when we go back to node two it's still there it's still available to use now that's easy and i don't do things easy so i thought i'd show you guys a a clever little way using the um, action filter and that is here and what it says is that when we clicked the gnome all right, um, and that was linked to our container. Our, one of the actions in the container was to set the visible end to false, okay? Or to set, sorry, uh, set the um, vis end to true. Okay, so it's now true. And basically what's happening here is that if you don't find the gnome and it times out, because this is setting at false, it will allow it 
to change back to node 2. No sound available. If this is now at true, this action filter can't work. So when it gets to the end, this action cannot be triggered. So you stay in node 3, the sound is available, you hear the ta-da. All right, so that's basically all the nuts and bolts that, that build this game. I know it sounds complex, but when you actually analyze each question and how I've done it, and you look at the different variables and the logic blocks and the loops that we've put into the, into the timers, you'll find all of those been covered in parts one and two. What three has done is bundled them all together in one project and create a bit of fun. Now it's funny, I had someone ring me up the other day and say, um, I've got this uh, thing, it's a health and safety thing. Um, uh, uh, and I thought, right, okay, you need to watch this uh, webinar because one of the things was it was, a, it was a health and safety walkthrough. And one of the things was it's, it's, it was in a petroleum plant. All right, and the thing is, you know, what's the first thing you've got to do? Well, you spin it round, you find the high vis jacket, you find your hard hat. Once you click on both of those, the hotspot becomes available to take you into the yard. All right, so you're using that same sort of scenario in a health and safety walkthrough. So this lends itself to quite a lot of things, not just for a bit of fun in a game like this. You can use this particular like logic blocks and, and variables to create all sorts of scenarios more than and well over and above of just a virtual tour. Anyway, I think I've spoken enough and um, thank you guys for uh, joining me. Um, I'm now gonna call on Karen to see if we've got any questions. Karen. Karen. All right, okay, so that seems like we don't. So I'll tell you what I'm gonna do at this point. Um, Can you hear me? All oh, right, ooh, heart attack, <laughs> thanks for that. I was just about to wrap it up. Okay. Uh, no, 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 I'm sorry. This was, uh, I, my mic wasn't uh, available, I don't know why. Um, so yeah, thanks for that. We have one question. Cool. Um, yeah. <laughs> well, hopefully there shouldn't be too many because everything we've done has yeah. been done in the past we're just lumping it together but go on right yeah and I, th I think um everyone priority has an idea of of um how the variables work and how to bring in a logic block and and how they're connecting with you know um the the polygon hotspots that's something new that you brought in but um uh anyway D danielle's asking it um can you elaborate just a bit again on what a hotspot proxy ID can be used for? Uh, he's, you know, asks uh, probably not just linking a polygon hotspot to actions, and yeah, so. Well, that's exactly so, what it does do. <laughs> that's it. Yeah. Well, I mean, not, uh, not just a polygon. It does, you know, uh, you can no, use it for regular hotspots too. Yeah, I mean, as I said, it can be used. Let 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 me um actually let's go back. Sorry, I've just shut the project. So let's just uh, go back to the project. Uh, let's go to the skin one that we built. Okay, um, right. Thing to remember with a um, uh, let me just let me just think. Right. Okay. So when you're linking with um, hotspot proxies, all right, um, you got to think that any sort of mouse action can happen. So it can be used for a click. It can be used for a double click. It can be used for a press, mouse over. All of these mouse events can be added to it. So if you wanted something, you know, if you wanted a color to change on mouse down and then change back up on our mouse up or whatever, you can do that. Um, you know, or mouse down, you know, shift it, you know, 45 degrees one way and up. So, but basically its task is it, it, it's it's grabbing the mouse event from the polygon and adding it to the um, uh, the actions in an element. But those, but it can take, as I say, the mouse over, the mouse leave, the click, the double click. So anything to do with the mouse, it can replicate. So it's not just a case of clicking it. You can do the mouse enter and leave thing and all of that. So, but it's primarily it's primarily only to create a physical link 
between the skin element and a polygon or point hotspot. As I say, hotspot proxies will work on both polygons and points. So this is the thing you've got to be careful with or with if you use the asterisk in there because it will then, this will re react with any hotspot, be it point or polygon, all right? So this is why I'm using that little trick to add an action filter to make sure that that action is only available in that particular hotspot. Okay, I think that's that one. Okay, um, that's it for questions today. Um... Superb. All right. Well, thanks everybody for, as I say, um, for, for, for joining me on this uh, little trip through variables and logic blocks. Um, I hope you found, uh, you know, things interesting. Um, you know, I know they're sort of way over and above what you probably need to do in a virtual tour, but you know, it does open up the, per the possibilities. Pano 2 VR, you know, it's a tour builder with grunt. That's all I can say. And you can do lots of things with it. So, and I'm just hoping that this, gives you that little bit of inspiration and yeah, we're all good. Anyway, I think that's me. Um, so yeah, once again, thanks for uh, attending as it were. Great, Karen? thanks. Yeah. yeah, thanks a lot. Thank you everyone. It was great having you here and uh, yeah, thanks again. Alrighty, okay, <laughs> bye everyone. Have a good day. <laughs>